What's up YouTube, Jason here, Mork Mixology Reptiles. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, make sure you head down and subscribe so you uh, can catch all of the new videos that we got coming up. We do a lot of DIY build stuff and first uh, year, first season breeding, kind of making it up on the fly. So uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. We've got more projects to do. So for those of you that I'm sure have been following on Instagram, uh, you know that we are now up to four clutches in the incubator. Just the other day we pulled Scarlet's clutch, the black pewter, bred of course to Stuart, the banana pine. Um, and she spilled her water bowl, of course. Looks really good though, not crazy small. I've got more Repti Chip coming today actually when this is being filmed, so she'll get a new tub. Um, but. She looks really good. Hopefully tonight or tomorrow I'll be able to get a meal in her and get her back on food. There's 27 eggs in here currently. At least three more clutches to go. I need a place to put them. So the long awaited hatchling rack video is on its way. Man, I need to come out here and take some pictures of snakes and whatnot. It's totally overcast. This is like the absolute best lighting you can ask for for photo and video uh anyway so if you guys have been following along on instagram and actually on here on youtube you know i got 60 of these v18 vision tubs and i went with the visions over uh the standard like six quart shoe box because i like how much longer they are um they're and they're a little bit shorter top to bottom which i like too so I just feel like it allows the snakes to get back away from the front and hide better. Um, but also if we have a few holdbacks or ones that don't sell right away, they can stay in here longer than they could in a, uh, in a standard six quart shoe box. Um, and if you remember correctly, we have these little uh, eight ounce deli cups that I picked up and my little piece of Velcro in the bottom so that they don't fall out. So we're gonna be all set on that. You know, a lot of people mentioned in our last build video, cause I had cut out a bunch of the actual cutting, no pun intended, that you guys really enjoy watching the, like either the time-lapse or the actual, all the steps and whatnot. Uh, and I appreciate that, but sometimes it's tough with uh, timing and life and weather here, unfortunately it's a big part of it that uh, I went ahead and got a couple sheets of half inch thick melamine this time. I have to special order this stuff instead of getting it directly from Home Depot or Lowe's. When I got home with my four sheets of half inch, I just, I had a very small window of time in the weather to get them out of my truck. So I figured I'd go ahead and just get them cut up. And is what I'm left with now is a stack of 30 shelves. So these are 21 inches long, I believe, and 15 inches wide. I'll have obviously the build sheet and the cut list and everything down in the description. Uh, but it's what this is for, they might look kind of funny because the, uh, the shelves are quite a bit longer than, than the uh, V18s here. But it's what I went ahead and did, see that's about lined up, and that's on one shelf here. You can see there's a bunch of room left over. Um, but the reason I did this is, if you look at a standard, if you look at most people that build PVC racks for the V18s, you build them this way, and, and the reason why is this dimension allows you to run three of the V15s, the, the really, really skinny ones. You can run three of those, two of these, or one of the V35 short, because it's the same height as this tub. The difference is the V35 short is longer front to back than these tubs are. So this size is designed to run all of these. And if I buy the 35s to put like holdbacks or something in, I still have that, you know, three eighths of an inch or half inch lip uh, covering the front of the tub. So, um, like, you know how I build them so they've got a little bit of an overhang. For spacing, I'll show you when we do the actual build. For spacing, we're gonna use 
probably CDs because I want these to be fairly tight, not like tight push pin in and out, but very, very small gap. Um, so the first step I'm going to do here is get all of these routed for the heat tape. We're running uh, three inch, four inch. I think this is three inch. Uh, again, all the information will be in the description of what I bought here. Um, so same idea as last time as every other rack I've built. We just need to figure out a spot that's about, you know, maybe an inch or two forward of the back part of the tub. So if we just use this to kind of square up this tub, and we're gonna set this say about here, you can see how you're gonna have it come across like this, you know, basically, basically this is what we're shooting for, something kind of like that. So they can get behind it if they want to hide but not be on top of the heat completely obviously directly on top of it and then lots of room in front to thermal regulate so it looks like that's going to give us about let's grab our tape measure here it's going to give us about three inches that's pretty standard and again this is three inch heat tape so i think we're going to offset about three inches forward that looks pretty good that'll set it up basically about that far in that should be fine so we're gonna go ahead and set up the little router jig. You guys have seen me do this a bunch of times and I'll, I'll fast forward through it for you. Um, I got 30 of these, 15 high, two racks we're building total, 15 high. That'll put 60 tubs in, should be enough hopefully this for this season. And then uh, maybe we'll go and make some bigger ones or get some commercial racks or something. So that's the first plan for this morning. 30 tubs, got a lot of routing to do. This is gonna make a serious mess. I'm just glad that it's not raining so I can do it outside. Here we go. All right guys, so uh, pick a front edge. Obviously I know that these are cut lengthwise here and we figured out in the last section there that we were gonna offset by three inches from the rear. So we just gotta pick whichever side you want, front and back. So we'll set these at three inches. and draw a line and then obviously you've got to cut it or mark it six for the width of the heat tape once you got that part figured out then uh, real quick this is the router I use like I said um, this is what they refer to as an on project router as opposed to an on table router uh, where this would be mounted and you move the project through it this we're gonna put on the project and then it's just a I guess they call this a joining bit. Um, it's just a, a flush, or not flush cut, just a, a cutout. So th it cuts uh, this thickness, whatever depth I set here. Um, and so what I do here, hopefully I can get this on camera, is I'll set the, set the router so that it's just touching at the moment, that way it's flush. And then I want to use the front edge of here with my guide, which I'll, I'll clamp down when we're done. So we'll have the guide set up so they can be clamped down, run the front edge against it. So now real quick, I'll show you, this is really close to the edge here. So this guide's not going to stay on because we're not offsetting as far. So what I'll do is I'll turn this around and I'll use the guide over here, but cut basically with the back edge of the, the, uh, router blade here. So let me see if I can get this down to where you can see what I'm setting up here. Okay, so here I can show you what I plan on doing since this is this is the back edge of the of the shelf. Three inches and six inches this is where heat tape sits. I want to take this uh, router bit here and set it so that the cutting tooth is just I mean just a tiny 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 little bit past the line and the reason for that is, is this is actually beveled I don't know if you can tell it's got a very slight cut to it and I want the uh, heat tape to be able to sit kind of in the channel and not have little waves in it for being too tight so we're gonna set this uh, tooth here we'll go like so and we'll set it uh, here so you can see it just like that so it's right at the edge of the line Hopefully you guys can see that. And then we'll set the um, guide or the ruler, or whatever, on the straight edge on the other side 
like so and we'll clamp it down so i'll go ahead and i'll set this mark uh at one edge like so and clamp down the guide and then i'll come over here and i'll set the same edge on this side clamp down the guide and then i can run this across while it's running and it will cut this line perfectly then i'll just move this up set the front edge of the sink of the cutter at that end, that uh, line there run the same thing and basically that'll leave me with the two cut lines and then i can take it all off and just freehand the middle because the depth will always be the same speaking of the depth let me see that i can show you this i want to set it just so it's uh it's just got a little bit of a, a cut to it so we run this down and you have to figure out where or how deep you want the cut let me uh, turn this down a little bit or so you can see it there we go so this thing moves up and down obviously so we'll figure out how deep we want the cut it doesn't have to be very deep because again we're just putting heat tape in it and you just want it enough that the heat tape oops you just want it enough that the heat tape doesn't get touched by the tubs so if i set about a sixteenth of an inch eighth of an inch whatever then i can lock it with this lever here like so and now you can see hopefully just a tiny little just a tiny little lip like that and that will give us uh, our cut and then is what i can do with this router which is kind of neat and i'll zoom you guys out is once i have that set to the depth and locked in with this lever uh, then i can adjust this knob here and it drops down this lock and i just put it on there nice and tight tighten it down and now every time i compress this it compresses against that lock so that i get the same depth setting every time so just a cool quick little tip all right guys there we go that's the setup it's uh it's super easy um these shelves are a little bit tougher to get uh clamped down and lined up in that because they're so much smaller uh this router is actually bigger than what i need for this but no big deal but like i showed you i've got it set up so that you can see it there it's going to cut that back line first then i'll move this forward and cut this line that's underneath it and uh yeah so it'll be all set to go number one 29 more over there i'm gonna put you up and let's speed through these real quick here we go So we got all of the shelves routed. Um, they're all over there actually. This is just a couple of them here. But uh, real simply, you saw how that works. Line it up, three inch uh, cut out here. I didn't do the little piece on the corners here like I normally will. I'll probably just go back with a knife and cut that out. Um, but it shouldn't be a big deal either way. So now I'm gonna do the edge taping on the shelves to get them ready to go. Uh, I like doing this step first when I'm not doing a fully enclosed one if i'm just doing the side rails which is what we're doing here the four corners i like to edge tape the shelves first uh, because it's much easier than trying to trying to put edge tape just in here i'd rather just edge tape all the way around and then screw the legs right to it so again i buy uh, big rolls of the iron on edge tape online this is three quarter or five eighths um, so it's too big for these so we do have to go back and trim all of the uh, shelves Once I get them done, but real simple I'm just gonna start on a back corner and then I'll edge tape all the way around and Trim it with the razor blade 30 shelves. Let's go
got it all set up first step. Uh, just the same thing I, I do on every rack. We're just gonna corner clamp it, make sure it's nice and square. Drop the square on it like so, because this will ensure, see it's a little, got a little gap there, so we'll clean that up. But that'll ensure that everything is straight up and down when I finally stand it up on its wheels. Um, this is half inch obviously, so it's much thinner, so I gotta be very careful about what screws and size uh, drill bit we pilot drill it with. We're gonna use uh, number six drywall screws. They're not quite as big around, so that should help with splitting, but they're also being drywall screws. They're a finer thread with a self-tapping tip, um, so much less likely to spread and split the wood. We are still, however, gonna pilot drill it with a nice small drill bit, whatever appropriate size. But I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, two in each leg, this leg, that leg, get the, I'm not obviously gonna do the bottom, that's just holding it upright, so we're gonna do this one and that one, flip the unit over, do the other two, and then hopefully stand it up. We're gonna use CDs this time, I told you about this earlier, so I got a pack of CDs, just to make a super, super small gap. Um, we're gonna build it a little bit different than the 28s, but very similar, just on its side instead of on its front. And I'm not using a single sheet spacer like I did the first time because this is thicker than more or more gap than I want. So as what I've got here is I've got two of the V18 tubs in like they're going to fit. And then I've got two CDs. So there's two CDs here. There's two CDs down here. And you want to make sure if you do it this way that they touch this piece and here, because this tells you, if it's touching on this one, that means that it's not, you're not getting any flex and this piece is like getting too close. Don't mind the ones in there, I lost them. So two on this corner, two on that corner, same thing over here, two on this corner, and two on that corner. And then, I'm because I'm only screwing this side at the moment, I have this just lightly clamped, not squeezing real tight, because it'll bend the, the drawers. So just lightly clamped so it doesn't move. Same thing down here, and then I have it clamped in the middle, just kind of holding the tub or the shelf, but again, not so much that it causes the shelf to bend, just enough to hold it in place so that the um, CDs don't fall down. And that leaves me room to work with my square, put the two holes in the leg, and then I can pull the drawers out, move down to here, and keep going. What's up guys, Editing Jason here. Just wanted to make a quick note about that clip you just saw. Um, turns out that I ended up not putting it together on its side like I have here because I, it dawned on me at that point since I was not doing both sides of the shelf, uh, screwing in both sides of the, self, the shelf at once, when I'd go to put the second one in, it would be able to move and there's no way to make that perfect. So I ended up rolling it up on its back just like we did with the 28s, uh, sliding the tubs in, putting the same um, CDs in the four corners in that, and then clamping it there, doing all four legs in one shot. So just wanted to clear that up real quick, make sure that you guys, if you're following along, don't try this because it doesn't work, and uh, on its back works just fine. So just clearing that up, back to the video. All right guys, after literally two days, this is why I didn't want to try to film it. Um, for those of you that don't know, I do work a graveyard midnight shift once a week and that was for me that was yesterday so uh, it's actually the next day from the last clip but it's all put together so uh, just a couple quick things to keep in mind if you do build this based on uh, my plans or this video one of the things I did uh, pick up on because I run and you know this you, uh, you might notice this in all of my racks that I build that have uh, four corners instead of a side. I always run them flush. You know, some racks you'll see they'll have them offset slightly for whatever reason. I don't know why. I run mine flush. I just like the look of it. But because of that, if you look down here, you can see because of the offset of the heat tape. Let's see, maybe better on this side. Because of the offset of the heat tape, um, there's only room for one screw to actually go through the thickest part of the wood. And you can see here, very first shelf I tried, went into this piece down here. Um, so I ended up not putting a screw in. And then I just went ahead and decided not to put a second screw all the way down. 
on this rack i'm not too worried about that because uh this stuff is very uh these tubs and what's going in them are fairly light it's not i'm not putting you know 4,000 gram females in these so uh four six screws per shelf should be more than enough believe me um, realistically you could probably get away with doing this up here and not have any problem so um i'm actually really happy with the way it came out it uh it's very tedious i was taking it like i showed you if you notice it's actually on its back not on its side it turned out to be a lot easier that way so what i was doing was i'll just show you real quick uh, if i was going to put another shelf down here for instance i was taking two cds a stack of two and putting them here middle and other side then setting the bottom of the shelf uh, against it like so put the drawers in and then set two and two because i only had 10 cds and then pin it and i just clamped it here instead of in the top because that way it kind of clamps top and bottom and any little bit of flex that i put in the shelf by clamping it here would release and whereas if i squeeze this too tight and you screw it it's going to be stuck so just a little tip uh i'm going to go ahead now i already obviously already cut off the bottoms of the legs um this is all i had left from the bottom so it was you know we we're pretty close these are about 66 inches long i guess so um worked out really well so now I'm going to go ahead and edge tape the four legs real quick and then turn it over, cut the back to fit, get it screwed on. I don't know if I'm going to put a base on this one yet or not. I'll decide that as I go. Um, we are going to do wheels, obviously, because everything I have has wheels. And oh, something else I didn't film, uh, a step that I forgot to show you and I actually forgot to do until I started putting the shelves in. You got to remember after you route the shelves out. I'll show you over here you got to remember on every on to go left and right so that you can uh snake it down through there you gotta go ahead and cut the little groove in it obviously right here so that the heat the heat tape comes and fits under you know between here and the wall uh sometimes you'll see people build their racks so that that heat tape section is exposed between the legs and that way you can just run it down and you never have to cut the edges off. But it just so happens that this one is kind of like half and half exposed and behind this wall. So you got to cut that little groove um, to make sure that the heat tape fits down in there. So I went back and did all those real quick. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do the edge tape, flip it over, figure out the back. I'll decide on a base. And I don't have wheels yet. So I might just stand it up and start doing heat tape next. Uh, you'll know in the next clip. Here we go. So I'll tell you, this is why I like making these videos for you guys, because if you sit down and watch the entire video all the way through before you start building and then you have it up available as a, like a guide or something, which I recommend you do, um, you'll catch all these little mistakes that I make along the way. Cause that's the beautiful thing about DIY. I mean, I'm not running these things on a, on a CNC that's cutting perfect ones every time. So uh, one of the things I overlooked, first of all, you'll see we've got it up we got stood up here and I'm working on the heat tape. I forgot that we had to uh, route out the channel for the probe. So don't forget to do that before you put the shelves in. I'd take this shelf out and change that. And you'll notice it's off center. Usually I put them in the middle. The reason I did that this time is because I want the temperature probe to be in the middle of one of the drawers. So that when I probe, and obviously it's in the middle of the rack height wise, that way when I probe this area for the heat gun, that's as, ac as close to the heat probe as I can get for a reference. So, so that was the first thing, I forgot to do that. Secondly, uh, I overlooked this until uh, now. Come on, auto there we go. I overlooked this until now uh, because these tubs are so much shorter. Uh, there we go. Sorry, because these tubs are so much shorter, uh, there's only three and a half inches of 
gap in here, open space, and I can't get a staple gun in there. So as you know, I do the heat tape like this and I usually staple it and then I'll go back and put the foil tape, the metal tape on it uh, to let the tub slide over, but I can't get a standard staple gun in there because it's too tall. So I'm probably gonna try to use um, just like a traditional metal like office stapler that you can open up, you know, open up flat and at least get like one or two just to hold it in place and then I'm gonna tape it anyway. I'm gonna use the, the uh, foil tape, so. You can see though it's routed, the heat tape's all routed down. Um, it's kind of a neat feature because since the, uh, since the heat tape is exposed here because of the size of the, the legs net like we talked about, you can actually pull this out to here. And so routing it was super easy. You just, you know, fish it all the way up and then slide it back in there where we're ready to put it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and staple all this together and get it wired up and we're almost done. Well, uh, that was, that was a lot of work. Um, so I don't know if it'd be easier to say build it from the top down or I guess from the bottom up you would have to actually um, I wouldn't I don't know how I would do that you could probably build it from the bottom up and be able to staple all of these as you go um, but basically is what I ended up doing is I just stapled you know in the sides here where it would come down I'd pull it tight staple it pull it tight come on focus there we go, pull it tight, staple it, just on those, um, just to kind of hold it in place, and then I went ahead and just foil taped the rest of it down. It looks like it's gonna work. Um, there's a couple of spots like on the edges where it's up a little bit, but uh, the tubs don't actually go all the way to the edge, so that shouldn't be an issue. I left this one undone, obviously, so I can put the heat probe in, and we get down to the bottom, and we need to solder on our uh, extension cord, run it out the bottom and through the back so um that about does it for this for the building perspective i think is what i'm going to do now is go ahead and get the extension cord done get the back finished put a base and some wheels on it if we decide to do that and get it all cleaned up and up and running so um as for the video i think we're gonna go from here to the snake room and have this thing either loaded or ready with the tubs in it, we can kind of review everything all in there. Um, there's a couple animals I do want to put in here to begin with. Uh, bring some out of quarantine that are that are ready. Uh, some of the smaller ones, some of our picky eaters. Try them in these uh, narrower tubs. So, uh, yeah. But for the build, that's about it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. And this next clip here should be the whole thing completely finished in the snake room. Let's take a look.
yeah, it's done. It's working perfectly. Um, thermostat is set at 92. It's giving me anywhere from 89 to 91 in the hottest spot in the tubs right about here. Um, they're working great. Uh, it's nice because it's given me a couple of smaller, more dense or uh, compact tubs for a couple of my picky eaters, uh, Anna and Bubbles, the champagne scaleless head. Uh, I actually have Anna's blacked out on the other side, trying to get her to just calm down a little bit. Uh, and then this is a new one that I haven't uh, shown on video yet. It's on my Instagram, obviously, but you guys got to see him. Houdini, the uh, normal 100% Het Puzzle male. We'll go ahead, once all the eggs, or all the snakes are out of the eggs, we'll put them in one of these tubs on wet paper towels together until they all shed, and then they'll get distributed through the entire rack and get labels like that and be ready for sale. So I hope you guys enjoyed the build. Uh, obviously I haven't edited yet, so I don't know how long this video is turning out. Hopefully not too bad. The builds typically take a little bit longer, obviously, to, to have some kind of detail. Uh, but thanks for sticking with me for that. Stay tuned to Instagram. Obviously, if you're not uh, already subscribed on Instagram, I'm right here at Morph Mixology. It'll be in the link in the description as well. Make sure you're there because as the hatchlings are coming out, They'll go there first. I'll make videos for every ha uh, every clutch, obviously, but they'll go there first. That's where they'll be available for sale first on the uh, Instagram, which will link to the website and a morph market, so on and so forth. Um, so we're about a week and a half out from uh, two total cl or two clutches to hatch, and then uh, about a month after that, we should have a couple more. And uh, yeah, so we're getting ready for babies and. Hopefully a couple more clutches coming out of here. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, like and subscribe as always. And share the video if you know anybody that needs a hatchling rack that wants to build one. Tag me in any of your posts of any of the racks that you build from us. And I will see you guys next week. See ya.